Hello everyone. Welcome to Fayette Regional Health Talk. I'm Tammy Dowd. And I'm Doug Fishesser. Thank you for joining us. As always, Health Talk is made possible by TV3 and Fayette Regional Health System so viewers in the Whitewater Valley can be better informed of health and wellness topics and opportunities in our area. That's right, Doug. And Fayette Regional Health Talk is also your source for up-to-date health news and events that are important to Connorsville, Fayette County, and the entire Whitewater Valley. Leading this edition of Health Talk News is the announcement that Fayette Regional Health System has added new primary and family care providers to its team of physicians. Joining Dr. Ryan Minnick and nurse practitioners Joanna Reisert, Mary Rummel, and Angie Neely at Fayette Regional's Primary Care Center are doctors Gary Metcalf and Jessica Duyard, along with nurse practitioners Jody Carmony and Amanda Kuiper. With these additions, Fayette Regional Primary Care Center now offers a full staff of family care providers seven days a week. Walk-ins are welcome Monday through Friday and even on weekends for adults, seniors, and kids too. Fayette Regional HealthPlex in Brookville would also like to welcome a new provider to the team. Dr. Damian McKnight joins nurse practitioner Christy Flum as a primary family care provider in our Brookville location. Together with urgent care specialist Dr. Ken Perrin, Fayette Regional HealthPlex is able to provide the care you need, whether you have an appointment or just need to walk in. Fayette Regional also welcomes several new specialty physicians to its team. Urologist Dr. Stephen Kim and pulmonologist Dr. Dennis Zawatsky join a growing lineup of the most specialized care in the region, including cardiology, oncology, orthopedics and sports medicine, pain management, diabetes care, and endocrinology, OBGYN, and pediatric care. With these new additions, Fayette Regional now offers excellent extended clinical from diagnosis through management for patients of all ages in the Whitewater Valley. As part of Fayette Regional's continuing efforts in community outreach, we are providing monthly screenings and activities as well as participating or hosting several events in and around Fayette County. On Monday, March 2nd, Fayette Regional will be joining AARP at the Fayette County Senior Center, followed up on Tuesday, March 3rd at Southview Courts in Liberty, Indiana, providing blood pressure and blood sugar screenings along with education and activities. Wednesday, March 5th, Fayette Regional will once again be at the Fountain Place Apartments in Connorsville providing education and activities beginning at 2 o'clock. To round out the first week of March, Fayette Regional Care Pavilion and Jerry Sykes Services will be hosting a caregiver relaxation luncheon on Friday, March 6. Caring for persons with chronic illness is a rewarding endeavor, but often places extreme demands on the caregiver, who can sometimes become overwhelmed trying to balance work, family, and caregiving demands. This can result in the neglect of their well-being. We are pleased to offer this caregiver relaxation luncheon as a time of respite for caregivers to refresh mind, body, and spirit and learn ways of taking care of themselves. Call 765-827-8022 for more information or to make your reservation. Fayette Regional staff and the community alike raised their sleeves throughout the year to give the gift of life. Last year, over 60 units of blood were donated, helping supply over 60 hospitals in Indiana. Please join us for our first blood drive of 2015 in the Fayette Regional Hospital Atrium on Tuesday, March 10th from noon to 4 p.m. Our goal this year is 100 units. You can reserve your spot by registering at DonorPoint.org or call 765-827-8038 for more information. Monday, March 17th, Fayette Regional will once again offer a free lunch and learn to area seniors at the Fayette County Senior Center. This monthly event is always well attended and free health screenings will also be offered. Our presentation will begin at 11 and lunch will be at 1130. If you wish to attend, please make your reservation by calling the Fayette County Senior Center. And finally, Fayette Regional will be at the Franklin County Senior Center on March 18th, providing education, activities, and health screenings starting at 930. We look forward to seeing you at all of these events. And when we return, our guests will be in studio to tell us about the new Fayette Regional Medicare Shared Savings Program, the Accountable Care Organization, ACO. An ACO is a group of doctors and hospitals 
and healthcare providers working together with Medicare to provide high quality and more coordinated service and care. We'll be right back. Walk-ins are welcome at Fayette Regional Primary Care Center. Open seven days a week for when children, adults, and seniors need to see a doctor. Open until 9 p.m. Monday through Thursday, till 6 on Friday and 9 to 3 on weekends, with both doctors and nurse practitioners on staff. No appointment necessary. Located right in Connersville, just one block from the hospital, the Fayette Regional Primary Care Center. Welcome back. Joining us now is Anita James. Thanks for joining us today, Anita. Uh, can you start out by telling a little bit about yourself? Sure. I'm the care coordinator for the Fayette Regional Health System. Um, our goals for this program are to provide chronic disease management for the patients that's been allocated to us from Medicare. I've been there for about 17 years. I have been the team leader for rehabilitation for most of those 17 years. In my new role, I will assist with patients with their needs related to their chronic diseases. Well, good. Uh, let's start there. What is an ACO and what does that actually mean? Well, ACO stands for Accountable Care Organization. Um, we have joined with Medicare and its traditional Medicare to become accountable for the quality and cost of the care that we are providing to Medicare fee-for-service patients. So is an ACO a health maintenance organization like an HMO, managed care, or like an insurance company? No, it's not an insurance company at all. You still would be with your traditional Medicare. Um, it's not a replacement plan for Medicare. It's just an additional item that we have to be able to serve our patients. Um, they will make it to where we can communicate with the doctors and everybody on your health care team to support you when you're sick, when you need some additional resources, and of course the ultimate goal is to keep you healthy and well. So who is eligible for services? Uh, basically anybody that's enrolled in the traditional Medicare program. Traditional Medicare, they looked at all those patients that have the most needs and have the most chronic care management needs, and they come up with a list and sent that list to us. Those patients have at least two or more chronic conditions, that are expected to last at least over 12 months. And they also have that risk of coming back. For example, the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, the breathing order, disorders, those actually reoccur quite often. So those are one of the groups that they targeted. The other ones are congestive heart failure. Uh, that's one where the patient starts having maybe some shortness of breath, they have swelling. Um, so that's another one they looked at. They also looked at strokes, they looked at diabetic patients, and then of course the patients that are going into the ER quite often, they're looking at that as well. I see, Anita. Now that we know who's eligible, uh, what types of services does, does the ACO provide? Well, effective May 1st of this year, there'll be a nurse that will be available 24-7, um, and it's through what we call NurseWise. Uh, the nurse will be able to see your plan of care that you and your physician, your caregivers have made and put into that. And then they will coordinate the care with the doctor, with yourself, and with your caregivers. Um, the hope is to improve communication between the doctor and the patient and all the providers that you have. There will be items available for the patient to come in um, times to see me as well in the office. Um, it may be a phone call, it may be you calling me or vice versa. Um, I can also assist with doctor's appointments. Say you're having trouble getting to maybe a certain doctor, I can help with that. And also looking at your medications. A lot of times when patients are completed their doctor's visits, they still have more questions once they get home. So I would be available for them to call and say, I'm not sure about this medication, can you tell me more? And the other thing is a lot of times patients will get home and they will say, well, I can't quite afford that type of medication. So I can help work with the physician to see if we can get something else that the patient can afford. A lot of other things that patients have issues with at times are transportation and how can we get them to the doctor's appointments or get them for their well visits so that they can get to their appointments and again, get all their needs taken care of. 
Um, we also look at resources within the community. For example, if they're having issues with their diet or they don't have enough food services at home, we might be able to get them set up with some Meals on Wheels and things. Um, just lots of different resources, uh, lots of education, and it can be done in a variety of ways. I see, Anita. It sounds like there's a lot of information involved in this. Uh, can the patient see any doctor they choose? Yes, they can. This does not change anything as far as what kind of physicians or what physicians they could see. That's still up to the patient themselves. I see. I see. So how, how, how would I know if my doctor is in the ACO? Well, Medicare sent out a letter the end of January, the 1st of February, to inform if you have been seen by one of our physicians, that our physicians are now in the ACO. So you will receive that letter, and you would also receive another letter that says if you wanted to decline. Um, most patients agree that this is a good service for the patient. Um, so if you receive the letter, then Medicare has deemed you in the ACO. The only part that per se you can decline is when we get into sharing of information. So who actually has access to my information? I'm sure that's like a big concern to many. It is, because I mean, with what we hear on TV and such of what, as far as information being taken from here or there, the only persons that can be, have any type of information sharing is the healthcare team. It doesn't go out to other vendors and such for them to see anything. It's just for the office staff and primary care providers. Okay, and what type of data will the ACO receive? Um, Medicare will just receive the medical claims. In other words, that you've been to Dr. Smith for your diabetes and you've been to Dr. Jones for your COPD. Mainly so that we can look at that and see if there's any way that we can help benefit by making sure everybody's communicating. For example, if I went to my primary care doctor last week and I go see my specialty doctor this week, I just had lab work done last week. I want to make sure that I can help with that to make sure the next doctor doesn't have to necessarily order new lab work if it was just repeated and there's no other issues for that. The other thing that they will not share any information about is anyone who has received treatment for alcohol or substance abuse without the patient's permission. I see. Uh, Anita, when a person agrees to take part in this program, basically what happens next and what happens if the person declines to take part in the program? Well, basically, there's nothing they have to do once they have agreed that they are willing to be in this program. Um, I will be getting in touch with them by phone or by mail of some sort to set up an appointment with them at their convenience. I will go over the program with the patient, go over education. I can work with the family or caregivers. We'll look at the plan of care that the patient and the doctor and the family have put together. Um, if a person does choose to decline, then they simply fill out the form that says, I decline. And that came again, like I said, in the original letter that was sent out. You can also bring it to your next doctor's appointment to give to the receptionist if you still have that. But at any time, they can change. They can change their mind now. They can say, yes, I want to be in it. Um, and six months later, I change my mind and say, I don't want to. And they can go back and forth as many times as they choose to. I see. So it, it seems to be pretty flexible if you want to change your mind yes. later and uh, either way. Yes. I see. Okay. Here's the million dollar question and I hope it's not a million dollar answer. How much does it cost to be part of this program? Well, Medicare looked at it and said we need to make this very um, available to patients, very cost effective so that the patients can receive all the services, be it a very, but be at a very low cost. Uh, Medicare will pay all but the $8.40 a month, and most patients have a secondary insurance that typically will pick up that copay. Um, anytime I'm available for uh, questions, you can call me. Um, my number will be on the screen as well. It's 765-827-8930. Um, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30. And as a reminder, we will have someone available 24-7 to talk to you starting May 1st. Thank you so much for stopping by, Ania. This has been very informative, and we're very excited to be participating in this program. Thank you for allowing me to bring you, bring you up to date on what's going on. This is an exciting step towards mm -hmm. better communication with all of our health care needs. 
Um, this is the center of the care for the patient, and your, their satisfaction is the goal. Thank you. Yes. Thanks Thank again, you. Anita. We'll be right back. Fayette Regional is the official orthopedics and sports medicine provider for the Connorsville Spartans and Franklin County Wildcats. Led by orthopedic surgeon Dr. James Miller, Fayette Regional Sports Medicine provides the student athletes as well as all residents of the Whitewater Valley excellent orthopedic care. Call us at 825-4477 or visit us online at FayetteRegional.org. Welcome back. It's time to shift gears a bit and talk about one of the truly fun events Fayette Regional holds each year, the annual Fayette 5K Walk and Run. Runners, walkers, kids, and wheelchair participants, participants are all encouraged to join us on Saturday morning, April 4th. The race begins at 9 a.m. Yes, Tammy, you're right. This is quite a fun event. It seems like it's only been uh, just a couple months ago when we ran this last year, but uh, Again, uh, we're happy to announce we are partnering with uh, Kelly House, the coach of uh, the Connorsville High School cross-country teams and track teams, I should say. So, yes, we're looking forward to it. Don't forget, Doug, that the Fayette 5K will also donate a portion of the entry fees to one Fayette County Elementary School. That's up to $500. It's simply a matter of which school gets the most people to participate. Now, second place would get up to 200 and all others get up to $100. So, everybody wins. It, it, she started that last year, and it, and it really did get a lot of, uh, a lot of kids out to mm -hmm. run and run for their, for their grade school. So, uh, we're looking forward to doing that again this year. Uh, this year's uh, 5K will again start between Fayette Regional Hospital and the Spartan Bowl. And... Uh, but the route has changed a little bit. According to Kelly, runners uh, should really love the new route. I agree. This year's route avoids Grand Avenue, which will make it much safer for runners and walkers. The race will begin on Indiana and return the same way on Indiana Avenue. And in the park, the loop has been extended to include the Miller Building. We'll be giving away so many awards uh, this year. Almost everyone has a shot at winning the race. Well, uh, possibly uh, not myself, but... Uh, <laughs> A trophy and a 2016 entry fee will be given to the overall female and male winner for the run, walk, and wheelchair categories. On top of that, first, second, third place uh, medals in seven age group categories will be also given away, and there will even be a kitty run for ages eight and under. Uh, Stewart Road Racing is again partnering with us. Their state-of-the-art chip timing makes it easy to get fast results and look up the results online the same day. That sounds great. Well, all you need to do is in, to enter this race is to visit FayetteRegional.org and click the 5K icon to register online. Or you can print a registration form and mail it in with your payment. Forms can also be picked up at Fayette Regional Health Works or Fayette Regional Hospital. Is that, is that correct, Doug? Uh, yes, it is. That is correct. Deadline for all uh, $15 pre-registrations uh, is March 25th, 2015 this year. Uh, this guarantees your uh, pre-registration can can uh, those who that pre-register can pick up their race packets day of the race beginning at 7:30 a.m. in the Fayette Regional Atrium, and let's hope for great weather and another great turnout. Let's hope. Last year it was a little bit chilly, but we did have a record number of participants, and I know the cross country team um, they really appreciate everyone's support. Like last year, most of the boys and girls of Connorsville High School cross country run cross country runners and their families will be on hand participating and supporting this event. We hope that the entire community comes out to join us. Fayette Regional Mental Health Minute. Depression is a treatable illness that can affect someone in mind, body, spirit, and community. Warning signs of the mind include sadness, tearfulness, irritability, and decreased concentration. Warning signs of the body include changes in sleep and appetite, fatigue, decreased energy, aches, and repeated trips to the doctor's office. Warning signs of the spirit include hopelessness, despair, and preoccupation with death or dying. Warning signs of the community are social isolation and impaired relationships. If you are concerned that you or a loved one is suffering from depression, seek help. 
The Fayette Regional Care Pavilion offers outpatient and inpatient behavioral health services for children, adolescents, adults, and seniors. For more information, call 765-827-8022. There is help, there is hope. And that's all the time we have today. We look forward to everyone joining us again next time on Fayette Regional's Health Talk. I'm Tammy Dowd. And I'm Doug Fishesser. Stay healthy, Connorsville.